The Relativity Fraud Established by trickery, maintained by propaganda A Simple Exposure for Laymen By Malcolm Bowden In 1887, an experiment shattered the scientific community. Michelson and Morley tried to check the speed of the Earth through the ether as it orbited the Sun by passing light in two directions one in the direction of the Earth's travel and one at right angles and then comparing them for differences. They expected to measure a speed of about 30 kilometers per second. To their amazement there was no movement of this order. They called it a null result. They actually measured 1 to 10 kilometers per second but it was still called a null result. They rushed out the theory called the Fitzgerald-Lorenz contraction. This claimed that the tube in line with the direction of movement shortens as it moves through the ether. There was no evidence whatsoever for this. It was only a way of getting over the implication that the Earth was stationary. Later in 1905 and 1915, Einstein produced his relativity theories which overcame the troublesome Michelson-Morley experiment by simply abolishing the ether. The whole theory is riddled with contradictions and problems which we will examine. Before we do so, we will examine a fundamental contradiction in the theory which will arise several times in various subjects that we deal with. This is known as the clock or twins paradox. It totally destroys the whole basis on which the theory is founded. Imagine a clock on the Earth and an identical one on a rocket. According to relativity, if the rocket goes into space and later returns, its clock will run slower than the Earth clock. However, as far as a person on the rocket is concerned, it is the Earth that is rushing away from the rocket. Acceleration is not accounted for in relativity and according to relativity the rocket can claim that it is the Earth that is moving. Now if it is considered that the Earth is moving then its clock will be slower than the rocket's clock. But a clock cannot be both slower and faster than another clock which is a complete contradiction. So the clock paradox which is inherent in the theory, actually destroys its validity. We will not set out the various claims and effects of relativity, but we will first look at four evidences said to support the theory. The experiment that was said to confirm relativity and made Einstein famous was the Eclipse Experiment of 1919. As starlight passes the sun, it is slightly bent. Newton said it would be 0.9 arc seconds. Einstein said it would be twice that, 1.8 arc seconds. Check plates of seven stars were taken at night and then compared with the same stars taken when the sun was in eclipse and the stars could be seen for a while as their light came past the sun but there are many problems with this experiment. Firstly, they used a mirror to reflect the light into a horizontal telescope. This introduced three times the error the direct use of a telescope gives. Secondly, the heat of the sun on the mirror warps it and introduces further errors into the readings. Thirdly, as the cone of darkness crosses the earth, it causes considerable turbulence in the atmosphere due to the change of temperature, which plays havoc with the star's images. Finally, the starlight comes in at an angle, and the Earth's atmosphere bends the starlight, which has to be corrected. But this correction is 100 times the minute angle change that they were looking for. Here are the results of plotting of two of the stars and how chaotic they are can be seen. To be convincing all the check star plots 
They are the green crosses, should be close together. And the eclipse star plots, the red stars, should also be close together. But you can see how almost random they are. C. Will, although a convinced relativist, nevertheless admitted in an Einstein centenary survey in 1979 that these results were very meagre and would not have been accepted as proofs today. They were, one, explicable by other means, the results were from half to twice the predicted value, and they had only 30% accuracy. Such a condemnation renders the eclipse results useless as a proof of relativity. Yet they were announced as convincing in 1919. An alternative explanation of the eclipse results. Professor Poor showed that a thin amount of matter around the Sun could account for the deflections. And we will be referring to this later when dealing with the precession of Mercury's perihelion. This was considered by the relativists, but was blankly dismissed by them. Why? It is perfectly possible for there to be a small amount of material around the Sun, but this was not the explanation they wanted. The Flying Clocks Experiment Four atomic clocks were flown eastward and then westward. It was claimed that the results supported relativity. However, there is the same objection to the clocks paradox. In relativity, you cannot choose one clock as a standard. All clocks are the same relative to each other. Many clocks at different latitudes are moving at different speeds, but no differences due to this have ever been recorded. The paper indicates that there was a similar experiment carried out in 1970, but these do not seem to have been reported. As with the eclipse results, experiments are repeated until the required results can be massaged out of the chaotic readings. Essen, an expert, pointed out that not all the results had been used. If they had been included, then the results would become westbound, 275 in theory, but reported was 205. The correct figure should have been 134. And the correct figure over the theoretical figure is only 0.49. In the eastbound, 40 was in theory, only 66 were reported, but the correct figure should have been 132. This gives a ratio of the correct figure over the theoretical figure of 3.3. As can be seen, the correct values are half and over three times the expected values. Hardly convincing proof. Kelly examined the original papers and claimed that the clocks would have to be 100 times more accurate than they were to prove their case. Many corrections were applied and one clock was corrected from 26 to 266 without any explanation. Clearly, this proof of relativity, like the eclipse experiment, is quite worthless, yet it is still paraded as convincing evidence. As with the eclipse results, the very small values needed to support relativity had to be massaged out of the wildly varying values recorded. Upon such thin evidence was relativity thrust upon the scientific world with a huge propaganda campaign that tried to intimidate any scientist that dared to oppose it. It was very successful, but not totally so. The precession of Mercury's perihelion. Mercury orbits the Sun in an elliptical orbit and the long axis slowly rotates with each orbit. It rotates at 5,600 arc seconds per century. But although astronomers could account for most of this rotation, there was a remaining 43 arc seconds they could not account for. Einstein boasted that this unexplained 43 seconds of arc per century was explained by his theory, against which classical mechanics was powerless. Yet no less than four classical explanations were provided. Charles Poor found that if there were a small amount of material around the Sun, this would fully explain the 43 seconds. 
In addition, this gave exactly the same deflection results that relativists were looking for in the eclipse experiments. Thus, this one assumption solved two problems without using relativity. Secondly, the small bulge of the Sun's equator causes this precession almost exactly. Thirdly, in 1898, Gerber accounted for the precession by assuming that gravity propagated at the speed of light. And fourthly, Moon, using the mass of the stars, known as Mach's principle, also obtained the same result as Einstein. Even today, relativists claim that only relativity can explain certain observed phenomena, and therefore it confirms that relativity is true. But, in every case, there is a classical explanation that is never referred to and receives little or no publicity. So relativists continue in their self-contained world of continual denial of alternative explanations. In 1859, Fizeau found that light was deflected by flowing water. Einstein claimed, yet again, that the classical explanation does not in the least diminish the conclusiveness of the experiment as a crucial test in favour of the theory of relativity. Poor's comments upon this statement are scathing. These two sentences should be read and reread. How can an experiment equally well explained by several different theories be a crucial test in favour of one of them? Einstein's claim is typical of relativist's arrogance. Muons. These are short-life, high-velocity particles that should have disintegrated before they reach the Earth's surface. As relativity predicts that moving clocks are slower, this is held as a further proof. But Setterfield and Barnes have shown, independent of relativity, that their life can be longer due to their speed. In addition, the Earth can be considered as rushing towards them, according to relativity theory, and we have the same contradiction as in the clock's paradox. Contrary experiments. Michelson-Morley and Miller. We have shown how the Michelson-Morley null result was the real reason why Einstein abolished the ether. But it was not a null result, for speeds of up to 10 kilometers per second were recorded by Miller, who continued with a similar apparatus studying these results for the rest of his life. These results greatly troubled Einstein because if there were no ether they should have all been zero. Shankland, who had worked with Miller, had an interview with Einstein which greatly enhanced his prestige. After Miller's death he wrote an article very critical of Miller's experiments claiming that his positive results were due to his inadequate control of the temperature of the arms, which was completely false. He went on to rise to high positions in his profession. Sanyak Sanyak passed a light both ways around a revolving table and found that the fringe changes corresponded with the speed of rotation. This proved that there was an ether contradicting relativity. The light was travelling through the ether at a fixed rate. The mirrors, going with or against the direction of the light, gave the interference fringe changes he recorded. Modern laser compasses use this effect today. To deny that the ether exists is nonsense. Einstein. What sort of a man was he? My labour. His first wife, Myleva, bore him an illegitimate daughter, which Einstein immediately had adopted without ever seeing the child. It is thought that Myleva, a bright student, may have been the brains behind relativity, because after she left him taking their two boys, he never made any further notable advances in physics for the rest of his life. He also gave her the full amount of his Nobel Prize. Was this hush money? Was Einstein a plagiarist? He, first of all, rediscovered